So the most beautiful and profound question there is, is who's actually experiencing this world? Who's actually listening to that music? Who's looking at Lisa now? Who's experiencing and experiencing this? Who experiences life? We think we experience life and we have lots of definitions to who or what we are. We're a happy person, we're a tall person, a slim person. We've had good experiences, bad experiences. We like things, we don't like things. We're angry, sad, joyful. We have a particular home. We have um, certain experiences and we think that's who's experiencing this world, that somebody inside here is experiencing. And we think that that person chooses, it chooses its reality and it chooses what to do, it chooses its actions, it chooses its behaviour. So we believe that who we are is somebody that lives inside of this body, like a soul or something, and that that person is experiencing life now. And that that person is a separate entity and can choose things and make decisions. The person that we think we are isn't really sure how it makes decisions, but it believes that it's through past experience and through thinking about it. But the person isn't really sure where thoughts come from or how thoughts appear, but it's convinced that, that that's it, that's who you are, and it has free will and choice. Even though right now it doesn't know how it breathes, it doesn't know how it thinks, it doesn't know how it moves the arms, it says, I move it. And then this gives the appearance that somebody's in there doing something. And it doesn't even say it as such. It's just a feeling of me. Sometimes it's reporting back and sometimes not. But it's a feeling that there's somebody in here doing something. But who is this person? Who are you that does things? Most of the time we want to talk about how to heal our emotions or relax or feel better. But who is this I that's experiencing life? Who looks now? There's nothing actually looking out of these eyes. This is emptiness experiencing itself, but not emptiness like you imagine it. Emptiness as in there isn't a location or there isn't a thing inside this body that's experiencing life now. There isn't something inside that's looking out and perceiving this world. There is only perception happening which doesn't belong to someone. That's really beautiful. And the really crazy part is, is we think that we're inside, we are somebody and we're perceiving from inside the body, but actually perceiving is everything. Perceiving is the nature of all things and isn't separate from all things. And the perceiving and the world and the senses 
So the senses, the world and the perceiving are all one thing. It feels like it's separated out, just like in a dream at night. It feels like you dream and you're looking through a body in the dream and you're looking at a separate world from that body. But actually everything in that whole entire dream is your dream and the whole thing is perceiving itself. It's not that inside the body of the person that's looking at the dream there is a perceiver. There is only perceiving everywhere because it's your dream. It's appearing in your dream. So you're not actually looking through that body that you're dreaming of at night. The whole dream is experiencing itself just like now but it's designed to look through particular objects. So this is designed to be the Lisa dream and that dream, whoever's listening, it's designed to be that person's dream. So what can happen is a movement from being an independent experiencer, so somebody inside the body experiencing, to boundlessness experiencing. But that doesn't belong to someone, that's not somebody waking up. It's life waking up to itself. And this is totally mysterious, this isn't something we understand. How could you understand it? Thoughts and understanding appear in this. It's not something you can understand. Thoughts cannot grasp it. Everything I say can be flushed down the toilet because it can't be truth. But when I'm speaking, there can be a remembering of what's being spoken about. All there is, is what's happening. Which is so beautiful. And any conclusions that you make from that isn't true. She's saying there is nobody, so there's nothing I can do. She's saying there is nobody, so that means there's no morality, so then I can do bad things and it's okay because nobody's doing it. She's saying I can do anything because there is nobody. I'm not saying any of those things. If I was, I would say them. If I haven't actually said them, there's a reason. There is nobody experiencing this. There's nobody looking out of the eyes. There is simply everything and that is itself. So this is everything knowing itself. This is God knowing itself. It's not somebody looking from here. It's not located. That means there is nobody that is victim. There is nobody that's perpetrated. That does not mean that I'm recommending going out and be a murderer or a bad person. Lisa's actually got lots of morality. The body, the character Lisa, doesn't like to use two chemical products. She's a vegetarian. She likes to eat organic, although sometimes goes for the cheaper object op, um, option. <clears throat> it doesn't mean any of that. What it's saying is that there is nobody having an experience. The body can have morality. The body does. I don't go into somebody's driveway and shit on their... Um, front drive, although sometimes I let Khaleesi, but that's my bad morality. Pavillon, pavillon. I'm joking, I don't let Khaleesi poop on anybody's grass, of course I don't, and if she does I pick it up, just a joking. So of course there's a natural morality in the book, but I don't sit there and, and no, I'm going to get gross, okay, you can hold off Lisa. So there's a natural flow of things. I don't punch people in the face if they annoy me. Maybe in sex, but not the rest of the time.
but that's not somebody's that doesn't belong to someone that's just the body the conditioning of this body the makeup of this body and this body is always up for changing it could be different and everything i say about it might contradict because there is no solid entity the body's always responding to whatever it's in contact with but ultimately there is nobody having an experience there's nobody behind this looking out there is simply looking there's simply experiencing happening and traditionally, um, in non-duality, they call it consciousness. There's only consciousness and everything is consciousness. Um, but consciousness is a really confusing word because then you've got awareness, which is the personal awareness of the person, and that doesn't go. So Lisa has self-awareness. She can put a makeup on. She can tidy her hair in the, Ustream, uh, in the live stream camera. Um, she can match her jumper with her trousers. She can also be aware if she's done something shitty and not very nice and apologize for that. But that's not somebody. That's a functioning of the body. That's a happening in this. And it happens by itself and belongs to no one. Lisa can always so choose and she often chooses a cup of tea and she chooses it in her favorite travel mugs. These mugs are amazing. I haven't been paid to sponsor them, but these mugs are the best travel mugs. I've got a little bit of a thing for cups and travel mugs. best I've ever ever come across now did I get paid for that advertisement is Lisa taking a backhand uh, from the advertising company very immoral advertising is very immoral in our society she's got no morality that's because she is nobody It's funny how now the cup is bigger than my head. So what's real? So now to you it looks like the cup is bigger than my head. But is the reality that my head is bigger than the cup? Just because you can imagine that my head is bigger than the cup? My head could be even smaller. Oh, Elango's calling in. Hello, Elango. He's ready. He's Lisa Blast of non-duality. Oh, yeah, so if you call in today, um, you do have to have headphones. And there's no getting around that. Somebody just wrote and said, but I don't have money and therefore I, I can't afford headphones. But I'm sorry. <laughs> you can't. You have to have headphones. There's no... There's nothing I can do. I could maybe, if you send me your address, send you some headphones. If you don't have headphones, it be like um, blah, 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 blah. feeds back. And so when identification happens, when the separate person happens, it's all about seeking. It's all about seeking to try and get home again, to try and get to wholeness, to try and find that place of comfort. Because as soon as identification happens, you've cut off from everything. So there's a discomfort that arises. And then the two primary emotions that arise from that separation the strong emotions is, I've done something wrong, I've been abandoned by wholeness, by home, by God. So there's this initial feeling of lack. And then there's this fear, I'm in relationship with this huge world and I'm afraid. And these feelings, these two primary feelings that manifest in the body, keep resurfacing again and again and again. And they get emphasized by the seeking. So over time, that sense of not being enough and that sense of fear grows. So we now in Western society 
have very strong sense of lack and fear, even though we live in a very fruitful society and we live in a society with plenty, not all Western societies, but a lot of them. And even though we don't have the, the fear that we used to have and that we, we have in more maybe Eastern countries of um, survival issues, there's so much fear and lack that comes up because our society is constantly um, giving feedback that there is something to lack and there is something to be afraid of. Our, our advertising industry is based on that, that you're not complete as you are and therefore you need all these things in order to be valuable. You can't just walk down the street as you are, you have to walk down the street with your Gucci. See, this is Gucci. You have to walk down the street with your push-up bra on, with your um, nice trousers on, with your hair done nicely. You, in certain societies you can't have tattoos, in some societies you can have tattoos. You have to wear your makeup according to society. And in some societies you have to have this colour hair, in some societies that colour hair and blah blah blah. So it's always telling you you're not enough as you are, so you keep trying to live up to everybody's expectations and it will never ever bring you happiness. And then over time it becomes a habit and this habit is caging and uncomfortable, but the separate person doesn't know what else to do. And because it's a habit, sorry, I just got to plug in. Because it's a habit, it keeps doing it again and again and again and then it keeps coming up that lack and we do really mean fit things in states of lack and in states of fear but mostly lack when we feel lackful so when we feel jealous or we feel not enough we do really mean things to people including murder or um hateful things like putting down people we call friends just because we feel jealous or going behind their back being nasty, doing nasty things because we feel lower than um, and our mind gets used to constantly comparing. So here we are with this person and constantly in comparison to something better or something worse and then this becomes the habit so the thinking becomes based around this and then over time the thoughts become more worrisome, more low self-esteem because that's what's being encouraged. You keep buying these things in order to feel worthy, but you're encouraging the thoughts of and the feelings of not being worthy. And then everything that happens to us is about lack or fear. That happened to me because I'm not worthy. And it's not like the thoughts attract things, but it's a flow. It's like a river. So when you have really low self-esteem, you attract that and that's what you see. But it's not like you attract it because there's a separate entity. It's just the flow of things. It's just the body moves that way because that's the way it's programmed to always feel not enough so it always goes for not enough it always feels broke it always feels poor it never treats itself it always feels unloved so it picks relationships with no love because if it had a relationship with love then you wouldn't feel valid as your sense of self if somebody loved you you'd be like ah, run run Lisa's hyper tonight. And everything becomes about this seeking game to validate who you believe you are. Everything. From the way you look, from the way you walk, to the way you talk, to what you go after. You think you most probably do your job because you love it, but it's most probably because it makes you feel acceptable to be alive everything when the identification is there the whole life has been like that built like that and in the seekers world happiness is getting and happiness is being successful and validated and striving for the future it's nothing to do with what's actually happening it's all to do about getting 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 and right now you're listening to this and you think that you're there listening to this learning, but actually there is nobody sitting there listening and learning. There is a collapsing of that energy 
and then your true nature comes through which doesn't have a memory doesn't have an ability to learn this it just is the amnesty that was always there when your thoughts your ideas changed your feelings changed always there but the seeker covers it and always looks in the next moment this aliveness this beingness that's here present only present only present hello Alango. <laughs> Lango is falling again me 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 this is it baby your 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 freedom everything that you've ever looked for was right under your nose it was so close but you never looked there how could you be enough as you are, as your essence? You, you, the separate person, always thought you weren't enough, so looked elsewhere. But your essence, that which is there all the time, is so complete and whole. It's just veiled by the illusory you. And that essence is everything. It's everywhere. And it's not a thing. It's empty and full simultaneously. It's everything and no thing simultaneously. It's creator of all things. It creates the body, it creates the trees, it creates the light. So your nature is so powerful and strong. And so all those times that you feel victim to life is such a lie. Because you've never been that person that felt victim to life. You've been the creator which is behind all things. You're God. Omnipresence. Absolute strength and power, the creator of the whole entire universe. It's so beautiful. <laughs> 